What's up everybody? Goldie here and we are going to be going over the main slate uh, here on Saturday the 8th of April. Another split slate uh, as I mentioned in the um, the early breakdown vid. <clears throat> we, we've got six games here and might be able to attack some offense once again you know, hopefully because I mean that's kind of how we score fantasy points right? Uh, maybe a, an arm or two that we could play on the mound. Um, maybe an arm or two that we could fade on the mound, for sure. Um, Johnny Brito getting his second start through the rotation. He was good in his first start. Um, not sure we want to be targeting him against Baltimore in general. It's a good lineup over there, man. Uh, Cole Irvin on the other side. Not a lot of whiff stuff from him. Maybe be able to get to the Yankees here. Um, St. Louis and Milwaukee. Jordan Montgomery on the mound. Really, really good numbers against lefties for Montgomery. But the Brewers are going to be able to platoon. Um, once again, yesterday, Jack Flaherty walked six guys, or seven guys, or whatever it is. Uh, you're walking way too many people, and the Brewers couldn't capitalize on that. Um, I think today, Jordan Montgomery, he's, he's got much better control, um, but they're still going to platoon against him pretty heavily. And the downside of the split for Montgomery is, is absolutely the righties. He's much, much better against lefties. Eric Lauer on the mound, he gave up... I think the most homers in the league to uh, last season as a starting pitcher. Um, so we can get to the Cardinals today, I think. Lauer does have a little bit of suppression in him. Uh, he's got some K stuff, but um, gives up a lot of power, and that's really not something you want to be messing around with with the Cardinals. San Diego and Atlanta. Uh, Michael Walker and Charlie Morton on the mound. Interesting pitching matchup here. I don't want to be playing Michael Walker necessarily. Really, he's not going to be able to throw it by Atlanta. So you can stack the Braves again. Uh, Charlie Morton on the other side, really tough matchup here for him as well, uh, but perhaps not as tough as it might seem. Generally, we don't want to target San Diego. They're not going to strike out a lot, but they do have a few more righties. Some of their better hitters are from the right side, at least from um, from a quantity standpoint. Of course, they have Soto and Cronenworth or, or whatever. Um but from a quantity standpoint, most of their hitters are going to hit from the right side, and that's the, definitely the plus side of the split for Charlie Morton. Dodgers in Arizona, Syndergaard on the mound, doesn't throw it past anybody anymore. Has just, what, 92 uh, in the tank anymore. Good control, good suppression. Um, but I think we might be able to get to some Arizona. as They kind of got to Kershaw a little bit last night. Uh, Zach Davies on the other side. He doesn't strike anybody out either, and that's not a recipe that you want to be messing with with the Dodgers. Um, Washington and Colorado, Trevor Williams on the mound. I don't think we're going to be able to play the Washington starter today against the Rockies. Trevor Williams has big problems uh, against lefties, and he's really not all that excellent against righties. Um, pitches to a lot of contact here, so you can target the Rockies again. Austin Gomber on the other side might be able to consider him, but hey, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, cheap price at what 6100 for him so he's got enough in the tank to outperform that price tag you know maybe pop for a 17 points or something go five innings strike out five don't you know give up just a run or something uh, but he's a lefty and washington's going to be pretty sticky against lefties in general as we saw yesterday like jose arena was a is a righty and you know they made it really difficult on on somebody that that couldn't really throw it by uh couldn't throw it by him so um, should once again, as is natural with Coors, uh, see some offense here and a healthy amount of ownership. Toronto and the Angels, I think we can consider really everybody here in this game. Josie Barrios, I hate playing him. I hate it. I hate it so much. But really, the Angels don't have all that many lefties that they can get to him with, and he's still serviceable against the right side. Now, the right side, they, you still got to go through Taylor Ward, Mike Trout, um, Anthony Rendon, not sure if he's going to be back today, but uh, if that's the case, he didn't strike out at all, um, you know, against righties or lefties. So, like, it, it, we'll have to see. Um, probably not going to get an early lineup from the Angels. It is a Saturday, so they did bump up the start time um, here a little bit earlier, right, to uh, 9.07 Eastern rather than the 10 uh, normally for a late game on the on the west coast but so we might get a list by the time lock rolls around but I, I wouldn't count on it nevin kind of uh persists in the joe madden 
ways of just releasing a lineup whenever the hell he wants to. So kind of frustrating. Um, so we'll have to see what they do. But I think Josie Barrios, like the price tag is still elevated. So that takes me off uh, a good bit. And I think the market kind of agreeing here with that. Not a very good value play so far. Um, but if you need it on a short game slate, it, if you just land on 8,200 against the Angels, I don't think that's terrible. We'll get into the numbers. Uh, Tyler Anderson on the other side, he doesn't have any strikeout stuff. Um, and he's a fly ball pitcher, and we don't want to be messing with that against Toronto. So I think we might be able to get to some offense there. Uh, certainly Tyler Anderson at 8,700, I don't really have any interest in whatsoever. Um, so an interesting interesting kind of mix here. I think we can target some offense. Uh, probably just going to want to play some Charlie Morton, I think. Um, maybe some Cinder. I mean, I don't know. We're going to have to get into the numbers here. It's, it's kind of gross. We do have projections pushed to the site. Uh, so far for the main slate, and naturally we're, we're seeing, because of these questionable matchups, we're seeing lower median projections so far. So that initially does suggest to me that we're going to see some offense here tonight, uh, and that's probably where we a lot of the time want to focus our builds, start with hitter stacks, and you know attack some of the pitchers that you want to attack, and then just throw in some guys on the mound and hope they survive and hope they don't just get blown apart uh, because really a, a median projection for anybody from Cole Irvin, son Zach Davies, all the way up to the top at Charlie Morton, you're talking a three point difference here uh, in median projection for what, how many, how many starters we got going? Uh, 12, um, one, two, what is that? Three <laughs> for nine of these starters. Um, they're all projecting within three points of each other. So you can really mix things up, I think. And I don't think you necessarily have to eat a, a ton of ownership on a Charlie Morton or a Jordan Montgomery. Um, and then you could probably spread things out. Certainly if you're building a bunch of teams, do that. Uh, but in, you know, single entry three max, you know, maybe we can uncover a little bit of value as we get into the games here. So let's do it. Um, let's start with the Yankees and the Orioles. Uh, Johnny Brito, as I mentioned, he was pretty good in his first start, went a full five innings, just threw 75 pitches. So um, hopefully we can see him stretch out a little bit. But through the four-seamer sinker, a little bit of a cutter, had a lot of swing and miss on the, on the changeup. And that really neutralized uh, a lot of the production in his, in his first start. So he had, had some big Ks, right? Um, and just I forget exactly how many Ks it was maybe six or seven or something like that, but a 35% K rate uh, nonetheless. He threw strike one. He got ahead of hitters, and that allowed him to get to the four-seamer, or excuse me, to get to the changeup from the fastball. So, you know, marginal value so far, at least in terms of, um, you know, it's a super short sample here. So, you know, I don't even know why we're going over the Arsenal numbers. But, um, you know, if these are to persist, good changeup with, you know, sort of break-even value on the four-seamer and the sinker, um, that's fine. But he's got a full seven, eight-mile-an-hour velo delta uh, on the change to the fastballs. You can't really fake that, so that's probably going to persist for sure. Uh, and then a, a legit slider here. You know, not a lot of value, of course, in the early going, but uh, velo-wise, it is a legit slider, and we'll see if he can neutralize uh, a lot of right-handed power as well. Uh, with this arsenal. So it looks good. Four pitches can keep you in a rotation. If you can mix in a fifth, you can you, know, you can really survive a long time in the big leagues. Very young pitcher here. So we'll uh, we'll see um, how he progresses, but uh, encouraging first start for him nonetheless. 7,000 on the mound at 19% ownership against the Orioles. Uh, I'm not sure I want to be targeting that. I like this lineup over here for Baltimore. Um now, once again, if you if you land on a 7,000 uh, and you got you get Brito here, you just kind of close your eyes and hope the Orioles don't just beat him to shreds. I think it's fine. They got plenty of lefties, and you know Cedric, Rutch, Santander, Gunner, uh, still Gunner's still cheap, 4,200. You're gonna play him again. Uh, Santander, 4,400. He had a fantastic spring and a really good classic. Uh, I think this is a very playable price tag. Make Cedric and Rutch. At 56 and 52, a little bit easier to get to with those those cheaper pieces. But the guys down at the bottom of the lineup, Georgie Mateos had a very good start to the season. Uh, on the negative side of the split here for Georgie, but you can get to like an Adam Frazier if you if you desperately need it. 
they've got him in the seven hole, so there's a little bit more value than perhaps there was for him when he was down in the eight and the nine hole uh, most of the year last season in Seattle. So uh, 3,100 for Frazier, I think it's I think it's okay if you end up stacking the Orioles. You just want to attack a young arm. Uh, not my favorite play here, but the price tags are starting to get a little bit more attractive. Not seeing any ownership on the birds yet, and that's probably going to persist. There's probably better spots that will uh, be want to be targeting in general uh, on the slate today. So, um, you know, that said, on the other side, you got Cole Irvin. Doesn't strike in, out anybody. He's got good suppression metrics. A lot of this though, was in Oakland at a very big ballpark. And there's a lot of foul territory in, in Baltimore. So that really translates to fewer strikeouts for a lot of pitchers um, because there's opportunity, more opportunity, to get kind of pop-up outs and uh, and things like that. So it the suppression metrics can be a bit noisy when coming from Oakland, right? Now... Camden is is still going to be a bit more of a pitcher's park anymore since they adjusted the dimensions. But, you know, that really doesn't change a whole hell of a lot uh, because you got the Yankees on the other side. It, it doesn't really matter. As I mentioned yesterday, they could still uh, like they could still put up some runs. They put up five or six yesterday, and they didn't really go off. So uh, I think this is a very interesting contrarian spot to get to the Yankees today. Uh, targeting some Cole Irvin. Now, he throws strikes, and he's not on the barrel. It doesn't walk anybody. It, excuse me. He doesn't walk anybody. I was looking at the numbers backwards. He is on the barrel at about a 9.5% clip. So um, throwing strikes, he's going to pitch to a lot of contact at 82% full. That does translate into a little bit of power. Not so much in the way of average, but 258 is, you know, it, it's about, uh, league average, so to speak, for a batting average allowed. 315 Woba and a 178 ISO. That number is is a little bit elevated. Does give up an 080 ground ball to fly ball to the right side with about 36% hard contact. So starting to get a little bit concerning and worrisome, and that's not a, a game we want to be playing with the Yankees over here. They've got a lot of power. They can hit it out of um, even a bigger ballpark in Baltimore. 1.3 homers per nine to the right side for Cole Irvin, but once again... Oakland probably suppressing a good bit of that um, that production. So 6,600, he doesn't have enough strikeout stuff for me to get excited about this. And at pretty low ownership against the Yankees, I think this is fine. Uh, now, don't be surprised if they just shit to bed and, and he stifles them for five innings or whatever. He does generally go pretty deep into a game. He's usually pretty efficient, and that's because he gets ahead of hitters at such a high clip, a full two-thirds of the hitters that he faces, He's he's got strike one. So um, very encouraging. He does have some chase. That's because he's throwing a, a solid five pitches here, trying to mix in a cutter a little bit uh, with the slider. Really not good value there for him yet on – on much of the breaking stuff, but a four-seamer sinker change combo that really keeps him out of trouble for the most part. Throwing the sinker a little bit to the righties, but um, and, and that's kind of worrisome, which leads to a slightly elevated power number. So with a an aggregate 17% K rate, uh, I'm, I'm not going near Irvin. I don't think so on the mound today. I really kind of prefer a contrarian Yankees stack, and the prices are attainable over here. 4K for DJ is reasonable 65 for judge of course you got to pay for um 53 for stanton and 49 for glaber now these are, they're tough to get to but we talked about ozzy cabrera he'll, he'll hit from both sides can play him at third or in the outfield getting some kind of fishy uh multi-position eligibility here last year he was shortstop and 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 in the outfield so they're moving him around a little bit but 2400 uh, pretty good value play, a uh, decent point per dollar play today at pushing about 2.6 point per dollar in in our early projection. Lower projection because he, he hits down in the, you know, in the six or worse. Uh, but I think you can get to some of the righties here. Uh, IKF doesn't strike out. He's the stone men at 2,000. He stinks, but um, he doesn't strike out. Jose Trevino behind the plate. We'll see what they want to do. Could be Higgs behind the plate for them today. And he's got... He's always had really good numbers against lefties, too. So um, 
definitely some pieces that you can get to to make this cheaper. You can play Volpe definitely at uh, at 2900. If you want to do like a, a wraparound stack, you might have to play two of these cheaper guys to get to both Judge and Stanton. Um, in addition to DJ, but DJ just kind of an average price here at 4,000 uh, makes it it really workable. Uh, I almost certainly wouldn't leave him off of my stack. Um, so mostly. Uh, Mostly the Yankees here for me, I think, today, and some Johnny Brito, but don't really want to go out of my way to be targeting Baltimore. It's a good lineup. Uh, St. Louis and the Brewers, second game of their series over here. Really disappointing for the Brewers um, last night. And I, I don't think we're going to have the same sort of uh, disappointment here, at least from the Cardinals' standpoint. Um you know, we'll get we'll get to Eric Lauer in a second, but Jordan Montgomery, as I mentioned at the outset, got elite numbers against lefties, uh, 211 average, 220 WOBA, 064 ISO, 35% strikeout rate uh, to the left side with a 1% walk rate. He's always had fantastic control, throws it over the plate, and throws strikes, uh, but that doesn't really translate into a an elevated contact rate. Um, good chase in him with a really good change, and it, well, I don't say really good, a, a plus change and a plus curveball um, that keeps him out of trouble against righties for the most part. He is more susceptible to the right side. 241 average, 304 Woba, those are fine numbers. 164 ISO, a little bit uh, elevated, not terribly so, but just a 19% strikeout rate, so below league average. And if we are going to attack Montgomery, it is going to be with righties. So the Brewers over here can platoon a good bit. Willie Adamas, of course, 5,300. He hits righties very well. They'll, they may even do something wild and lead off Mikey Brasso. Uh, he's very cheap. Um, off the top of my head, don't remember his price. Let's see. That's the early slate. Let's get back to the main. Uh, yeah, 2,200. If you if you want to lead off a $2,200 first slash third baseman today, I mean, there are, there are worse plays that you could make, I think. Um Willie Contreras behind the plate, 4000 still playable price tag. So not terribly crazy about stacking the Brewers here today. I do respect Jordan Montgomery, and we are seeing the market kind of agree with that. About 15.5 median projection here at 8300 on the mound and about 40% ownership. Now, the Brewers are going to strike out still, and that increases his upside, Montgomery's, uh, a little bit to the righties. But they do have... Um, Joey Weimer down here at the bottom of the list, who is kind of a tank, and he's got a lot of power down here. Brian Anderson, um, probably going to see a resurgence offensively this year, hitting in, uh, what do they call the bar park? American Family up in Milwaukee now. Um, so they've got some righties over here that you could get to conceivably uh, Jordan Montgomery with. Not my favorite stack if I were playing... Any of the Brewers here, I'd probably just make it a short stack. Uh, I, th I think that's probably the most equitable way to attack it. You can get to Willie Adamas here. Not the best point per dollar in value plays here necessarily today. Um, so naturally, we're going to see some pretty low ownership on the Brewers. And it's just a six-gamer. If you want to stack against one of the more popular pitchers, go ahead. Um, on the other side, Eric Lauer, 8,100 for the Brewers. Lower median projection and naturally about half the ownership of Jordan Montgomery. That seems fine to me. He still does have some strikeout stuff, about 24% in aggregate, throws strike one, uh, slightly elevated K or walk rate, rather, um, to at, at 9%, but the suppression metrics are still fine. Buck 23 whip, that's just because he's throwing strikes. Unfortunately, they're not. he's not getting a lot of swinging strikes. Called, called strikes are, are down as well, so that keeps him uh, under the sort of 30 percent threshold that we like to see with CSW and he's not really on the barrel but he last year as I mentioned gave up a lot of homers and a lot of power to the right side 232 so not so much in the average department 317 Woba but a 196 ISO to righty still has some K stuff there 24 percent but an 065 ground ball to fly ball 36 percent hard contact elevated for sure and a 1.7 homers per nine to the righty so uh, gave up a bunch last season 28 homers that's a four percent raw home run rate and it versus every hitter that he saw so <laughs> that's a big number normally you see about half of this so 
Um, he's certainly attackable, definitely with the Cardinals and some of their their young righties here that they can um, that they can get to a lefty with. Tommy Edmond hits lefties very well. Seven, uh, seven. Not sure why I said seven. Shortstop eligibility for Tommy and four thousand. He'll probably lead off. Dylan Carlson probably in the two hole as well at thirty five hundred. They have Tyler O'Neill forty two hundred, very attainable price tag. Not up at the four thousand that he was. Jordan Walker is going to show a lot of power. Of course, the top prospect for the Birds as well. Juan Yepes, they may throw him in the list. Um, they're going to try and platoon a lot, and they've got some guys they could do it with. So if you need to make it really cheap by playing. Uh, like a Taylor Motter or one of these other guys, uh, you could do that. He's two two K flat, um, and he's probably not going to outperform that price all that often. But uh, I mean, he's he's the stone minimum, so you, so you could do worse. Um, Goldschmidt and Arenado, you got to pay for them for sure, for fifty six and five thousand respectively. But Wilson Contreras uh, at forty one on the other side of his brother, um, I think very playable Cardinals here today, and we're probably at least in initial ownership, only seeing about 10% on them. I think this is a pretty good stack. Uh, naturally, the Dodgers, who we'll get to, and Coors, who we'll get to, uh, are garnering most of the ownership here. So I think the Cardinals could be a, a pretty viable piece here and big, big kind of sneaky total uh, for the birds down there. Um, so I really know Eric Lauer on the mound for me. Cardinals aren't going to strike out, and I don't really trust this guy. He gives up too much power. So just give me the birds. And some Jordan Montgomery. Uh, okay, San Diego and Atlanta. Uh, second game of their series here. Going to be like two really good baseball teams over here. Michael Walk on the mound for the Padres. Uh, 7,900. Projection and ownership look about respectable to me on a six-game slate. Maybe the 11% ownership could be a little bit high against Atlanta, to be quite honest. 19.5% um, K rate for Waka. Suppression metrics are fine. Throw strikes and doesn't walk anybody, but is on the barrel a little bit at a full 10% clip here. So a buck 13 whip doesn't mean that that barrel rate is really going to translate into some really crooked numbers against Waka. But when he's floating it and throwing it right over the middle of the plate, um, he's susceptible to both sides. 162 ISO to lefties, 197 ISO to righties with... Just a 23% K rate to the lefties. It's because he's got a pretty good changeup still. 17% strikeout rate to the righties. So he's a little bit more vulnerable um, in terms of raw contact to the right side than he is to le to the lefties. So if you want to get to the Braves, they're going to be another kind of off-the-board stack. And you can stack the Braves every single day. Acuna is going to steal every time he gets on base. Doesn't matter who it's against uh, or who's behind the plate trying to throw him out. And... You know, Riley's got a, a lot of power. you got to pay for these guys now, though. 63 for Acuna, 54 for Matt Olson, 57 for Austin Riley, 48 for Ozzy. I mean, it, this top half of the lineup, it's expensive, and that's really going to keep their ownership down. But it's an okay spot against Waka here, who's going to throw to some contact. Full 81% contact rate. Doesn't really translate to power yet, necessarily, but uh, at least in homers but certainly susceptible with a, a neutral ground ball to fly ball. I think we can play the Braves here, definitely. Um, on the other side, Charlie Morton on the mound for Atlanta. 9,000 for him. Elevated ownership, naturally, as we always see with Charlie Morton. He's got strikeout stuff, but his susceptibility is to the left side. So if you want to play a Juan Soto here, who's not going to be played at all, he's expensive, uh, go ahead. If you want to play some Jake Cronenworth, 4,600, probably a little, a little pricey for him just in general, but... Uh, very reasonable as well. We'll see what they want to do with Trent Grisham. They may drop Xander down to like the four hole or the five hole or something, uh, as they have done a couple of times this season. And they've been leading off Trent Grisham. So uh, he strikes out a lot, and we don't really want to be dealing with that because Morton's still got 27% strikeouts to the left side of the plate, even though he does give up a good bit of power. Excuse me. <clears throat> 212 ISO to lefties, 1.8 homers per nine. So um, he'll get on the barrel a little bit to the left side, and he's susceptible. So if, if you don't want to eat the most expensive pitcher, as I said, we can spread things out on the mound, and we don't have to be eating this because Charlie Morton, 
Uh, the Padres, this is a good baseball team over here. They're only going to strike out at an aggregate 22% clip themselves. So despite the fact that he has Ks and the highest K rate on the on the day, uh, I think we could probably look to, to fade him with some really good hitters over here. Uh, Manny Machado hits righties just fine. Um, of course, Bogarts, and we talked about Soto and Cronenworth. So um, not sure I want to stack the Padres necessarily. They're off the board, and nobody's going to be doing it. So, you know, by all means. But um, I really would prefer getting to some Morton if I'm building multiple teams. Probably come in under the weight or underweight to the field, rather, on Morton if I just had to guess. Uh, I haven't built a bunch of teams yet, but um, that's probably kind of what I'm assuming and how my builds had, had flesh out a little bit. So I think we can get to some offense in this game overall. And mostly prefer the Braves for sure in the betting markets. Probably got to lay a number here. Yeah, you got to lay three to two on them. Might have to worry about some rain. Just 50 degrees in Atlanta, but they always get these pop-up storms or whatever. And we're getting into rainy season uh, down in the south. So um, another team with a kind of sneaky elevated run total here that's probably not going to see a lot of ownership in the Braves. Same thing with Padres. Prefer mostly just shorter stacks or, or one-offs uh, if you're getting to anybody in San Diego. Okay, Dodgers and Arizona. Syndergaard on the mound for Los Angeles, 7,600. Fine price tag for him, but unfortunately only has 17% strikeouts himself. Now, he'll suppress a little bit, and he can navigate, but we need him to go deeper into the into the baseball game and um, you know throw more than just five and a third, five and two thirds. Last season, he stayed healthy finally, which is good, but just threw 85 pitches per. And we need him to throw more than that. If um, now we're assuming that um, you know he, he's not just going to get Dave Roberts after the fifth inning and 65 pitches or something like that, so that's good. We got that kind of upside. But um, at 7,600, a lot of this lack of uh, depth, so to speak, is kind of priced in. So um, we can play him in 85 pitches for a you know at 7,500, 7,600 dollar starter. Uh, is perfectly respectable. I think the, I think the median projection here against Arizona is probably about accurate, just because he did, he's not going to throw it by anybody anymore. He doesn't have the 25% K rate that he used to have, 23% uh, before he got hurt uh, with the Mets. He is much more of a pitcher now, and he's throwing a sinker still, and that's really only his only good pitch. But he's he's spreading out five full pitches, even trying to mix in a cutter a little bit. So uh, we'll see how the Arsenal kind of continues to develop in his second year here with the Dodgers. Um, you know, so I'm not super excited about playing Syndergaard, but you can play him. He's one of the one of the better arms, just in, in you know, he's one of the better pitchers. Let me put it that way. Uh, on the day here, and and a depressed ownership, eight and a half percent against a a marginal list over here. Uh, in Arizona, I think it's playable. That said, I think you play Arizona as well. There's a lot of guys over here that are very cheap. Uh, in particular, I mean, you start right at the top. Josh Rojas, 4,400. Not a, a lot of raw upside for Rojas in general, but um, very playable. He's going to get a, a Bs for sure. And has a little bit of pop. You know, you can tell Marte, we've always loved playing him. He hits from both sides. Um, hopefully, you're going to see Cattell get, get on a little bit of a heater Later on this summer, as he, he plays more games, he was hurt a lot last year. Really took him out of rhythm. But 4,200, that's a very attainable price tag for sure. Uh, Lord S probably don't want to be targeting righties necessarily um, against Cindergard. He's pretty neutral in terms of efficiency allowed to both sides of the plate, and really nothing to speak of in terms of raw numbers. He does pitch to a good bit of contact, over 81% raw contact rate. So some guys will hit for some average, but not so much in the power department necessarily. Neutral ground ball to fly ball, so you're going to need guys that are going to be able to lift a baseball. And really, that's uh, Christian Walker kind of territory. Corbin Carroll at 3000 I love this price for him. And he's starting to show a little bit of his pop also. Um, one of the fastest guys in baseball. And if he gets on first base, Syndergaard has always had a problem uh, allowing uh, base runners to move on the base paths. So... Corbin Carroll, like, he could steal second and third, maybe on the same pitch, since Syndergaard's been so bad. Um, like this a lot for him. Jake McCarthy, he can elevate to baseball, too. 
3300 this is an attainable price. Probably stay off the guys down at the bottom of the list, like a Jerry Perdomo, Alec Thomas, um, Gabby Moreno behind the plate. Yeah, not super crazy about that. So would most likely stick to the top six, uh, depending on how they, they flesh out the lineup here. But I think getting to some Arizona, because Syndergaard doesn't strike out anybody anymore, I think it's a reasonable play on a six-game slate. Um, probably not super excited about attacking them uh, in a betting market. It's probably need a bit higher than uh, than just plus you know $1.35 or something. But naturally, on the other side, I mean, this is the Dodgers against Zach Davies, who we'll get to right now. Um, they, you've only got to lay a dollar seventy or so, eight and a half to five on on LA. Seems like an all right price. Zach Davies on the mound, sixty nine hundred for Arizona seems a little pricey for me. I'm not I'm not touching him. Also, with just an eighteen percent K rate, he has problem throwing strikes. Uh, now, compare that with Syndergaard. 65%, 66% strike one rate for, for Noah up there, but just a 56% strike one rate for Zach Davies. So he's going to get behind in counts. The Dodgers are very patient hitters. They walk a lot, and they have a lot of power. So you could, you put guys on base for free, it starts turning into a, a 4 nothing inning you know, real quick. And that's not a, a recipe that we want to be messing with with the Dodgers. So um, he gave up a lot of homers last year as well, mostly to the right side. So a bit of a reverse split for Davies. 187 ISO. They'll hit for some average. 251 is fine. 321 Woba also fine because he's got pretty decent control to the right side, but he's throwing it right over the middle of the plate. 80% contact rate here as well. So sinker, sl- sinker change combination mostly. So just a two-pitch guy, and that's really not a top of the rotation or even a middle of the rotation type of arsenal with just two pitches, kind of a bullpen um, type of quiver here for, uh, for Zach Davies. Um, you can get to him with a, a few lefties. So, so don't shy away from a Freddie Freeman uh, or who else we got from the left side, Max Muncy, of course, uh, 4,800 for Muncy elevated price tag, but um, you know, Zach Davies, Muncy's weakness is striking out and, Zach Davies is not going to throw past him. So you can play Freddie literally every single day. You can play Mookie literally every single day. Those guys are not cheap. Will Smith, 5,800. Like, let's slow down. Um, I like this kid. He's a good hitter, but he's not at 6,000. Like, this is not – he's not Mike Trout, all right? So um, you, you probably have to be careful with that. He's fine in stacks, but I'm not playing this as a one-off, even though he might get there and make me look stupid. Uh, JD at 49. So you got to pay for these guys in the top five of the Dodgers. Uh, which is probably going to keep their ownership down a little bit. Don't have their numbers off offhand, but they're still going to be one of the more popular stacks of the day with uh, Coors down here. Um, you can get to some cheaper pieces like a David Peralta, James Outman, still cheap down here. Uh, if you want to play a resurgent Jason Hayward at 2300 I wouldn't call it quite resurgent just yet. Um, he's hit two balls over the wall, so you know, let's slow down. But um, would prefer still mostly to get to the righties, but... Stacking some of the lefties against Zach Davies. I mean, this is a Dodgers. You know, um, you play everybody. It's uh, it's fine. And we're on a six-game slate here. Zach Davies not going to strike anybody out. So it's fine. Prefer mostly L.A. here. But uh, you can play some Arizona stacks if you want to also. Okay, Nash- Nationals and the Rockies in their third game here. Um, Chalk Nationals went off pretty good last night. Rockies got there a little bit too. Scored some runs late. Uh, Trevor Williams on the mound, 5,700. Don't think we could play him today. He has big problems uh, to the left side of the plate. Used to have a good changeup uh, back in the day, but uh, no value on that anymore for him. Just a, a four-seamer sinker combination with really bad breaking stuff uh, and bad off-speed stuff too. So he's going to be pitching to a lot of contact himself today, and this is a good spot once again for the Rockies. He only has a below, slightly below league average aggregate strikeout rate at 22%. Suppression numbers are still fine, but his left on his strand rate at a full 82%, that's way too high. And with these numbers, he can't suppress power to lefties. Full 315 average allowed, 373 Woba and a 202 ISO, 1.7 homers per nine. That strand rate is going to tank when he starts to regress a good bit. So uh, pretty good against righties. And unfortunately, the Rockies, they really only have a couple of 
um, good lefties that you want to play. You can play Jury Profar now. He's 3,800 leading off. Going to see about 12% ownership in early runs here. So pretty popular, once again, for the Rockies, um, as is natural. But they've got Charlie Blackman, 4,600, playable price tag. Ryan McMahon, who frustratingly hit his homer uh, against Mackenzie Gore and and not against uh, JoJo Gray the day before. Um so you can play a couple of these lefties, but they really only have, you know, the three that they're going to throw in here all that regularly. They're playable at these price tags, so probably don't want to get to too much of the righties over here. I would prefer probably just getting to a short Rocky stack with a Profar, Blackman, and McMahon. They'll be more popular, for sure, than some of the righties, but you you want to pay 6000 for C.J. Crone now? I mean, I don't. Um, it's kind of kind of aggressive. Chris Bryant has a fantastic start to the year, 5,300. He looks really good at the plate, and he's always been a very good hitter. His problem has been staying healthy, but he's a fantastic hitter, and Coors is going to play up his, his skill set really, really well. Puts the ball in play, probably doesn't have as much speed as he used to, since he's dealt with the back issues, but um, you know if he can stay on the field, there's going to be good, good value for Chris Bryant pretty much all season, seeing about 15% ownership on him right now, too. So there's a couple cheaper pieces down at the bottom of the lineup. Ezekiel Tovar, 2,700 you could play. Uh, Ellery Montero, 31. He's got a lot of pop. You could play him as well in stacks. Um, but once again, don't really want to go after Trevor Williams with right-handers. It's mostly the lefties. That's where he's, he's really... Really, really, really weak. Um, but you could play the Rockies. If you want to stack some of the righties, go ahead. It's Coors Field in a six-game slate. Austin Gomber on on the other side for the Rocks uh, on the mound. 6,100. This is a pretty good price tag for Gomber. Um, he doesn't have any whiff stuff, but he has enough to outperform this price tag. Uh, so this is another one of these guys at Coors Field that could you know pop through a 10-point 10, 10 median projection here. Very low ownership. If you want to play a little bit of Gomber in some tournaments, I, I think it's okay, but the numbers are, are definitely going to tell you not to, right? 18% K rate. He'll throw some some strikes, and at a you know, respectable 50% strike one rate, it's fine, but uh, he gets on the barrel to righties at a pretty respectable clip, allows some hard contact really to both sides, mostly to righties is his main susceptibility, however. Um, 229 ISO, 373 WOBA, 301 average to the right side. 18% K rate, doesn't walk him, but 1.8 homers per nine and a north of 30% hard hit rate. So against lefties, still giving up some contact there, as I mentioned, 35% hard hit rate there, but um, you know, neutral ground ball to fly ball in aggregate, really no good pitch to speak of. Uh, he's got an okay slider, pretty decent value here for him, but he's only throwing 91, 93 on the four seamer. Good velo delta to the changeup, so that does provide some positive value for him, and really kind of neutralizes uh, where this ISO number to righties would be otherwise if it were not for that good velo delta on the change. Uh, this would probably be north of 250, 260, playing all his all his games at Coors. So uh, not going to throw it by anybody. And certainly we've seen with what Washington, uh, when they get good matchups on the mound, they're going to capitalize. They put up a crooked number yesterday, and they can do it in a hurry. Alex Call, cheap once again. Jamer, cheap once again. Joey Manessis, 4,900, very attainable against a lefty. You're going to see 20% on them. Um, so it's fine. But don't be surprised if Austin Gomber outperforms his price tag, 6,100. If you want to throw in... Um, I, I'm not sure if I want to get a full 15% of of Austin Gomber or something necessarily to get to you know 2x on the field, but getting with the field to a, a pretty good clip here at you know 8 or 10% I think is probably pretty warranted. Uh, this price tag in general pretty cheap for him. Not a good matchup, undeniably. These guys are not going to strike out a lot. Um, Caber Ruiz behind the plate, he's not going to strike out. So very pesky Lane Thomas, good numbers against lefties. C.J. Abrams had a huge night. He hits from the left side, but Victor Robles, he had a decent night as well. Very cheap. He could turn the lineup over uh, a little bit, and they've got some speed. So a dangerous lineup here if you if you are playing Gomber. We never like playing you know, sub-par strikeout pitchers at Coors Field, uh, but it's it's okay. It's not the worst thing in the world at this price tag. He can outperform that number, but uh, obviously, as is 
most often we're just going to prefer offense here. Okay, last game of the main slate. Josie Barrios on the mound for the Jays and Tyler Anderson for the Angels. Josie, 8,200. Uh, he got hit around again uh, by lefties in his last outing, and um, you know nothing's changed. He's had plenty of time to fix this, and, and he, he just hasn't. Uh, Four-seamer slider and the sinker combination for him, bad changeup. Full 10-mile-an-hour velo delta, but the four-seamer is bad. It's flat, and it's right to, over the middle of the plate, and that's why the changeup's bad, too. So still translating to a 301 average, 216 ISO, 1.9 homers per nine, 31% hard contact rate to the lefties, and it's just not good enough. So um, I really don't want to be playing him at 16% ownership. Like, unfortunately, the Angels, they have a, They've only got really a couple of lefties that you're excited about playing, and both of them are Shohei Otani, you know. So Jake Lamb they have at uh, first base in, in, in the outfield. You could play him. He'll be in the six hole probably. Um, you know, but but he's terrible anymore, and he strikes out like when he's hitting off a tee. So difficult to be overly confident playing him uh, but you can play trout again finally got into a baseball last night good to see uh, but taylor ward also a pretty good hitter and will get there against some righties on occasion so the top half of the lineup if anthony rendon is in the list he's 3900 he makes it a little bit cheaper and he didn't strike out against anybody so that's playable but hunter renfro still 4800 no thank you you know so not my favorite stack to get here um with the Angels against Josie Barrios. And really, that means you might be able to play him because he's still got a 23, 24% strikeout rate against the right side of the plate. And all these guys, even in plus matchups, they're still going to strike out. So um, in tournaments, you could probably play some. I don't like the price tag at all on, on Josie. I'd, I'd much prefer if he were down at 7,200 or something. I'd, I'd think that'd be a little bit better. But he throws strikes. Unfortunately, they're just... Uh, uh, really good strikes if you're a hitter. And 80% contact rate for Josie um, with such a significant weakness weakness in, in the platoon, uh, it's really worrisome. It makes him definitely a gulp play a lot of the time. Um, so, you know, we'll have some, but, you know, we're, we're not excited about it. Uh, Tyler Anderson on the other side, 8,700. Also, don't think we can really play him. Sub 20% strikeout rate and is a bad matchup. Um batted ball-wise for sure, and definitely in the strikeout department for Tyler Anderson against Blue Jays. Uh, he's got some suppression metrics, but he suppressed quite a bit. And toward the end of the season, you know, last year, um, he started to get hit around a little bit more. And he is a fly ball pitcher. At the very least, he's a neutral ground ball to fly ball. And That'll make him a little bit susceptible here because there's some some pretty good line drive hitters over here on on Toronto. Uh, George Springer, Vladdy for sure. Bo Bichette got into a ball last night. Matt Chapman will hit some balls in the air, but with a neutral ground ball to fly ball, we're not terribly worried about a negative batted ball matchup in that regard. So, um, as I said, he he suppressed contact and suppressed production a good bit last year. That's got his, he's got a really, really good change up going back to his Coors days. He's always had a good change mixed in the cutter now and very good pitch there for him as well. So three pitch guy, four seamer cutter change and all pretty good value, even though he doesn't throw all that hard. So he spots, he throws strikes. He did, and he didn't walk people. He stays off of the barrel. So if that number, we start to see creep up a little bit, the barrel rate, then we could really start going after him because he's not going to throw it by, throw it past people, uh, which is an 11%, 12% swing strike rate, 19% aggregate K rate. Um, the swing strike rate is actually a little bit elevated. That's because of the good cutter and the good change. So uh, in terms of power, he doesn't, he really just doesn't allow it. Buck 20, really buck 30, ISO to both sides. It doesn't translate to Homer. So um could be a bit of a disappointing outing. Don't be shocked if you see Tyler Anderson perform a little bit here, but at 8,700, I think a lot of the upside is really priced in. So not my favorite play on the mound, even though in deeper tournaments, um, you can certainly mix him in. He's probably at about 15, 18 points 
that kind of ceiling here against Toronto tonight. So the median projection of about 13 and, and 12% ownership looks about fine. I don't think there's really much value we could squeeze out of either of those numbers. So would prefer, I mean, you could play Toronto for sure. Um, they're really not going to be played tonight either. So you can get to some sneaky offense here, uh, but I think probably, hey, yeah, yeah, don't tell anybody I said this, but we might be playing some Josie Barrios tonight. Um, I'm going to have some Otani for sure, and, and definitely Trout as they start to wake up a little bit. But they're expensive. They're hard to get to. So not, not my favorite spot for offense necessarily here tonight. Um, if I had to choose a stack, of course it would be Toronto. But uh, not overly jacked about it, but who knows, it may land on it. Uh, a good bit later. So that's it for the main slate breakdown. Um, we went a little bit longer here, but let's get quickly to stacks. Uh, I like the Yankees against Cole Irvin a good bit. Definitely like St. Louis against Eric Lauer. Uh, not so much on either the the Orioles or the Brewers, but you can play some Orioles if you want. Uh, San Diego and Atlanta. I think you can get to some offense here too. Mostly Atlanta, I think. Um, Dodgers in Arizona, definitely the Dodgers. Probably a little bit of Arizona, too, I think. Uh, definitely playable. Washington and Colorado, just offense here for me. But don't be surprised if Austin Gomber stymies the, the Nationals here a little bit. Uh, he can outperform that price tag. That doesn't mean he's not going to give up four runs, but he, he may very well do it in, like, six innings with six or seven strikeouts or something like that. So um, 6100 is is a good price. If you want to play a very expensive stack, you might need to – play a little bit of Austin Gomber. One of those expensive stacks could be Toronto, of course. Um, let's take a look at their prices here really quick. Uh, Springer at 5000 pretty good price here for him. Bobichette, 55 57 for Vladdy. Chapman, 45 uh, Danny Jansen, 33 makes this really cheap. He's a good fly ball hitter, makes a lot of contact against lefties. Pretty good catcher play down here tonight, I think. Um, so that's kind of where we are on the breakdown, guys. Uh, good luck if you are building teams. And once again, keep an eye out throughout the day for projection updates. We'll be pushing those to the site um, as often as possible. Good luck.